Some way to round off the wonderful rendition from Cameron Jordans. Fabulous turnout here in Adelaide as we look at the team news and Ante Milicic makes four changes to the 11 which started three days ago. Alana Kennedy returns from suspension to replace McCormick in defence. Tamika Yallop and Amy Harrison slot into midfield while Bayern Munich's Emily Gilnick replaces Razzo on the wing. The three South Australian squad members, Willisey, Checker and McCormick, are all on the bench hoping for an appearance. So there is Alana Kennedy sent off in the round of 16 game at the World Cup against Norway. Australia held on to force that penalty shootout, but she was suspended for the next game, and that was the game against Chile on Saturday. The first choice centre half. Well, they would have enjoyed having those tracksuit tops on because it's really chilly today. In Adelaide, temperatures dropped 15 degrees over the space of 24 hours. Amy Harrison making just her fifth start for the Matildas today. 14th cap overall for her. Here's a look at the uh, team news for the visitors, and they freshen up with no less than six changes, including one in goal, with first choice keeper Christiani Endler back in France. Backup shot stopper Natalia Campos gets her chance. It's her ninth appearance for her country. Karen Araya is back in after being a surprising omission on Saturday. So a real test for Natalia Campos, 13 centimetres shorter than Christiane Endler, who is one of the world's best goalkeepers, but she's returned to France for the game between PSG and Olympic Lingame this weekend. That's a blockbuster in the French top flight. Sam Kerr, as always, happy to share a joke before kickoff. But once that comes around, it's all business. And she was upset 72 hours ago with the way they finished against Chile. Cop that late goal from a set piece. And Grace Gill is alongside for the call tonight. Australia will want to be ruthless this time around. That's right, Speedy. It's great to be here. And as we've seen, it's a bit of a new look midfield. So I'm really looking forward to see Tamika Yallop and Amy Harrison coming back into the side. And while our three South Australians are starting on the bench, I'm really excited to see if one of them gets minutes tonight in the reception they get at Cooper Stadium. And also, as you've mentioned, for Chile, it's great to see their backup goalkeeper, Campos, have an opportunity with number one shot stopper Endla returning to PSG. Again, Chile playing in their white strip. La Roca. And they are a team on the rise. 37th in the FIFA rankings, the highest they've ever been. But that will continue to improve under Jose Letelier. They were unbeaten post-World Cup until that loss three days ago. Former goalkeeper certainly towers over his support staff as the 52-year-old. Ante Milicic scored four goals at this venue in the National League. He said yesterday it was a place that he used to love coming to. And it certainly is a wonderful playing surface for the players to turn it on. Sharing a joke and not letting the lip readers in on it. As Australia prepare for one of their trademark kickoff routines. Sam Kerr add to her 38 international goals. 40 goals in 40 games for clubs and country in this calendar year. The countdown is over. The 13-year wait to watch the Matildas in action for fans in Adelaide is over as Carpenter gets right on the front foot and the cutback will get cut out. Exciting for fans, though. Grace to watch those kickoff routines, and that one nearly worked out beautifully. That was a good one there. I think they they tricked me on that one. I thought they were going to go up the other side, but um, a good piece of attacking play. And we see Ellie Carpenter straight away getting up and down that flank as she did all all afternoon on Saturday, and I'm sure she'll play a similar role this evening. Fabulous athlete getting ready for her first W League campaign with Melbourne City after playing with Canberra and the Wanderers in years gone by. Here's Kennedy. Quite 
wrap it around. It was a pretty tight window to find Catley. He's got that wrist all strapped up. A high five that went horribly wrong. Fractured scaphoid. Brings back memories of the 12th man when uh, the high five just goes horribly wrong. We might need to get a fact check on that one a bit later. <laughs> Went at it with too much gusto, apparently. No foul there as Lopez went down, one of the six inclusions. Our referee is from New Zealand, Anna Marie Healy. Deciding there was no need for the whistle there. Much more depth in the centre-half role for Australia in this little two-game series than there was at the World Cup, so Catley able to remain in that left-back role. Here's Carpenter in the right-back role. Took it away from Gilnick. Now the Bayern Munich attacker is overlapping. Carpenter didn't need her in the end. Settles for the corner. Has to be a corner. <laughs> Bit of speculation there that um, certainly looked like it had come off the Chilean player there from where we are. And even Chile set up to defend that corner. They knew what had happened, but uh, the assistant and the referee went against sentiment. Here's a chance for the visitors to get forward, perhaps. Zamora couldn't hold it up, but it breaks for Aedo. Was Pania playing in the left back role today as Francisca Lara goes further up the pitch? So used to seeing Tamika Yallop provide such energy in midfield as one of those eights attacking in midfield, but uh, it's a number six role there, anchor in midfield for her today, and uh, she's caught one here. She'll need to be a little bit more disciplined playing in that deep six role today. Um, as you mentioned, she's fantastic at getting up and down in the eight or ten position, but um, more of a holding pivotal position in the six, and uh, she's more than capable of playing that as well. And has scored a stack of goals in Norway in recent years with Klepp. 32 goals in 57 games. And quite a few heading into this camp as well. See whether she can get forward every now and then here she is playing the role she has to tidying up for australia yeah. Sam Kerr yeah. presenting for a touch ignored by kennedy on that occasion as they go right side again amy harrison who will be lining up for the western sydney wanderers perhaps in the season opener in 48 hours time I'm sure their coach Dean Heffernan is hoping she gets through unscathed here this evening. Kennedy on the move. Fabulous ball. Fans appreciating that around the corner for Catley. Little Avenue now back to Yallop. Kennedy is advancing here, wants another involvement. Australia getting on the front foot. And that's where we see the fantastic sort of dynamic that Alana Kennedy brings to this side. The ability to drive forward and provide it a, an attacking outlet is um, just speaks to her experience. Um, I'm sure the girls will be very happy to have her back in the side as a, a level head. A three-time W League champion, including last season with Sydney FC. Catley hasn't had her crossing boots on yet. It's another opportunity here on her right peg. And Kerr was lurking. That was important defensive work from Camilla Sayers, who scored Chile's goal the other day. No malice there from Tamika Yallop, but a cute little technical foul to slow things up, and there's nothing wrong with that. Camilla Sayers with that clearance, keeping it away from Kerr. She made the short list of 55 players Selected by FIFA as the best performers at this year's World Cup, the number 18 for Chile. If you fish, she's making that run, drop off. 
Ante Milicic barking out some instructions which you may have picked up from his technical area. Chile more advanced here. Pressing Lydia Williams. Tries to find Gilnick. Lovely. First touch. And Australia don't get that call either. Actually, it was overruled as take a look at Carpenter's skill a moment ago. Still a teenager. Closing in on 40 caps. I think it's um, easy to forget that Ellie's only 19 years old sometimes. this squad to have played at this venue for Australia back in that Asian Cup of 2006 kept a clean sheet against Myanmar Australia went all the way to the final and suffered heartbreak in a penalty shootout against China plenty of room here for Carpenter Gilnick Kerr on the move in the middle oh stretching and that could easily have been an own goal it's Sayers once more with the clearance and another good bit of attacking play there sort of through Ellie Carpenter. And what, what I liked about that, though, is we saw that our three forwards, Caitlin Ford, Sam Kerr and Gilnick, all running away from the ball. Sam Kerr was able to check her shoulder and actually drop back to provide, provide some depth and a different angle of option. It's going to be an outswinging corner from Amy Harrison right in front of that uh, bay of Chilean fans. Cool. No worries. Sliced up, and the diminutive goalkeeper with a confidence-boosting take. Natalia Campos, 27 years of age, so often the understudy to Cristiani Endler. Back-to-back starts for Polking Hall, and that one crossed the sideline, according to the assistant. Meters away, Sarah Ho adjudicating. Brisbane have the bye in the opening round of the W League, so part of the reason perhaps the Polkinghorn goes back to back here. Harrison away, finds the feet of Kerr. Legazzo now. Didn't get the angle on that pass intended for Ford. Long range strike. That's what she's got in her locker. Karen Araya. Down breeze thought, why not? And I don't mind that from Araya as well. She saw Williams just off her line and thought she'd take a, take a chance and um, not a bad effort either. touches I mentioned that last shot came down breeze from Karen Araya for more on the conditions let's get down to pitch level with Robbie Cornthwaite yeah thanks pretty there's been a lot of uh, talk obviously in the lead up to this game about the midfield three of Harrison Yallop and Legazzo and the assistant coach for the Matildas Ivan Yolich was up there and and basically just explaining that they all can't go forward at once. One of them really needs to stay and, and sort of sit in front of that defence. On, on one occasion, Yellup had gone forward, Harrison as well. Um, and they were quite uh, upset about the fact that they'd left themselves quite exposed. So still some, uh, some early things to work on for the midfield three. Araya certainly gives Chile a different presence in midfield to what they had the other day. Earns that throw, last touch off Catley, according to the assistant. Harrison now. Plenty of room out on this right-hand side of the pitch. Demanding it. And now they will come right eventually to Carpenter. Chile are really well drilled 
team defensively, moving from side to side to try and shut down those passing lanes, as Aedo did on that occasion. And she's fouled here. We saw this a few times as well from Caitlin Ford on, on Saturday evening with her first touch away from that defender. She's really got to move it away from a dangerous position. And a couple of times already tonight, she's just inviting a bit of pressure uh, and unfortunately handed it over to, to Chile on this occasion. Recorded their first ever win in a World Cup game earlier this year when they got the better of Thailand. 2-0 victory. If they made it three, they would have gone through to a round of 16 game against England. But uh, Karen Araya, or rather Francisca Lara, hit the crossbar with a late penalty. And it remained 2-0 as Polkinghorne is fouled. Get it! 20th cap for Fernanda Pania. 26 years of age now, plays with Santa Teresa back in Chile. for more movement. Legazzo provided it. Lovely ball out. Uh, Williams, Milicic was talking Carpenter through it, saying you were out, but a touch let her down. And a bit more adventure, adventure rather, from Val Maceda, and she would have been in behind Catley there, but she hesitated on her running behind. But what we are seeing, Speedy, is Chile are having much more success by pressing Australia a bit higher tonight. So Australia are not having the time and space to build up like they did on Saturday. Nice ball out from Yallop as Gilnick got closer. And then let herself down with the pass. She was off the other day as a substitute. And she got a little bit of a bank there from her coach after that pass, which had no pressure on it, straight out of play. Adds a different dimension to the pressure valve, doesn't it, when you play for Bayern Munich? It sure does, and she's had a, she's had a fair bit of success already there with the club in Bayern, um, and I think she'll bring a really physical presence to today's match. She's just got to settle into the game. Again, tidy ball from Yalla. Down Catley. Tried the nutmeg on Balmaceda, who made a nice contribution off the bench the other day. Catley taking on all comers. Early ball in, and Gilnick took it on the half volley. Capable of flashing that one into the top corner, not to be on that occasion. First real opportunity into the box there for Australia, and Steph Catley managed to get one away on her left boot, and uh, Emily Gilnick just couldn't quite get her head over the ball to get a shot on frame. Both very good going forward, the fullbacks in the first game. Seven balls into the area from Catley, as you saw. And an early one there, finding a teammate as well, which is what the coaches want to see in that situation. Lopez. Carpenter in the road of Panias cross. Maybe a hand used there, but now she can get on the, the move. Clattered into Lopez, referee. Could have let it go as it broke for Chile, but decided to pull it up. You see there, Carpenter just not pulling out of that run or slowing a challenge into there, so understandably a free kick there for Chile. season with the Portland Thorns in the NWSL. Nelly Carpenter, good looking free kick here for Australia to deal with. And Araya will be disappointed not to have hit the target there. And again, Australia struggling to deal with a set piece. 
And that's a really great, genuine opportunity for Chile off that off that free kick. And I think the first shot on goal for Saturday night was not, not until about the 30th minute. So for them to be attacking and getting a shot on goal this early in the game, um, they've, they've started a, a lot stronger, Speedy, in my in my opinion, from Saturday. I just wonder if having the breeze at their backs is really helping them here. Australia are finding it a bit tougher to go into that breeze, which is a healthy one. Movement from Gilnick. Were you a player who preferred the breeze at your backs or running into it? Oh. It's always tough when you've got a headwind, headwind but I find that it, it favours that really textured ball over the top and as a midfielder, uh, I love to look for that kind of ball through. Good Emily, well done. Good Emily. And we'll see whether Sam Kerr can get the kind of ball she's after over the top into the breeze. Ran away to score Australia's second in Parramatta. The next club will be announced in about 24 hours' time. Watch this space. Where will Sam Kerr be playing her club football? Rumoured to be in England with Chelsea. French clubs also in the mix. Not too far away from finding out where she'll be playing come January. And she's on the move here. Harrison to an offside Sam Kerr. And the flag of Sarah Ho does not please the fans here and there's a coming together in the center circle as well between Legazzo and Lopez and the assistants all over that one as well advising the New Zealand referee on what she saw let's get down to Robbie Cawthwaite yeah, I mean, first, first of all, the chance for Sam Kerr. I'm sitting almost along the line there, and he did, she did stray just uh, by that half metre or so. But just as she went through and the whistle went, there was a coming together in the middle of the field. Uh, Legazzo and one of the Chilean players, and the fourth official was all over it. He was straight up letting Ivan Jolic know and the Chilean bench that it was both players involved, and it was, uh, it was pretty much a 50-50. So let's see what happens here with the referee. It's a yellow card for Chloe Legazza. And there might be a yellow card the other way as well. The referee just trying to work out who the Chilean player was. It was her opposite number of Legazza, both the sixes, six of one, half a dozen the other, some might say. It's taking a long time to get the message across between assistant and referee. Legazzo is fuming about this decision. Going against her, she's in the book. Here it is, watch the centre circle. Arm went out from Lopez. Legazzo tried to break, a, break free. And maybe flung out an arm, which is what the assistant saw. A bit of frustration there, but scuffle aside, a, a promising chance for Australia. And a good look by Amy Harrison, just maybe a touch too late on a pass through to Sam Kerr. Really important, though, for the Matildas girls to just keep their heads screwed on, keep a cool head. The experienced players need to step in and just settle things back down and say, let's, let's move on with this and um, keep playing our game. stoppage and we go again here's Lara Chile's greatest ever goal scorer turnover to Gilnick and beats a couple support from Harrison Chile forced Australia back as a counter-attack was looming and still build down that left-hand side through Catley Legazzo took off in behind. Sue Helen Gallas blocked it off. She won't be claiming that nutmeg, will she? Oh, she might. She might try it on. <laughs> Lights. 
really taking over now in Adelaide. Australia had scored inside three minutes in game one. Goalless so far. Chances few and far between. A half chance for Gilnick so far. Dante Milicic wasn't happy when he saw the replay of Kerr's offside a moment ago. Of course, no VAR. It would have been a situation if there was VAR where the flag might have stayed down. A lot of people, though, were enjoying the fact there was no VAR in game one. We are the VAR today, Speedy. <laughs> Kennedy again. Plenty of weight on the pass. Catley kept it in. Great stretch to get there. And now the turn. Ford. Catley back into the mix. And anywhere will do for Chile. Optimistic strike from Yalif. Well, that's a beautiful bit of play there by Alana Kennedy. Again, just piercing the back line of the Chile team onto Steph Catley's left foot and boot, boot sorry. And again, another great opportunity on goal from a from a wide uh, attacking option. And great turn there by Caitlin Ford. Really mobile. She got down nice and low and was able to keep her body away from space, as I was mentioning before. That was a great example of doing that the right way. Turned over to Kerr. Look at that pass for Gilnick. Oh, and she sliced it in! Off the defender, perhaps, but Emily Gilnick celebrates. The Bayern Munich attacker on target for Australia, midway through the first half. And an assist for Sam Kerr. Delightful weight on the pass. Made the first time strike comfortable for Gilnick. What a pinpoint pass there from Sam Kerr. And as you said, Speedy perfectly waded through the defensive line and great powerful run from Gilnick coming through. We've seen Gilnick score goals like this time and time again. And while it has taken a deflection, really fantastic finish that would have been going on goal even, even if it hadn't come off the boot there of the Chilean player. It's the eighth goal in Australian colours for Emily Gilnick. The angle was getting tighter and tighter by the second. But she gets it on target, and Campos in goal. No hope after the little nick of Camilla Sayers. Australia 1-0 up. And that was a massive relief for Emily Gilnick as well, because nothing had gone right for her in her cameo on Saturday and her start to this game. But uh, she would have turned to the coach afterwards with a smile, no doubt on the way back to halfway. I was thinking just the same thing. That's a great confidence boost there for Emily Gilnick. Um, hopefully, hopefully now she gets a bit more sort of pep in her stride and is able to take that into the, the remaining minutes of this game and her time for this game. Risky pass by Kennedy, putting Yallop under pressure. Dealt with it expertly, though, to make a Yallop. Who we used to cheer on as Tamika Butt, but now married to Kirsty Yallop, the former New Zealand international. Here's Carpenter again. Gilnick bending a run. Carpenter keeps on going. Now Gilnick's available. Crossing this time. Carpenter! It's only ever scored one goal for her country. That should have been a second. She knows it. She sure does know it. You can see the frustration in her face after that. And she'll be disappointed with that effort. She knows she needed to get her head over the ball to keep that one down. But again, a brilliant bit of play from Gilnick and Carpenter then combining up the right wing and fantastic cut back in there by Gilnick. Just a real shame Carpenter wasn't able to do more with that. The one goal coming at the Algarve Cup against China a few years back now. Aggressive header by Alana Kennedy. Allowed Legazzo to turn. Harrison playing with her head up. Gilnick again the option working over Pania now. Pass Pania. And claiming a handball will have to settle for the corner. No doubt Sam Kerr will have a fair bit of attention on her for this corner. We know how, how impressive she is in the air off set pieces. Um, I think she'll be tightly marked. It's quite the CV that Emily Gilnick has already played for Liverpool and Bayern Munich. Doesn't get much bigger than that on the CV. 
Harrison again goes short two to beat for Yallop not sure that's what uh, teammates want in the middle in that situation going to a two on one and Gilnick across capable of lobbing it in does so for Legazzo and closed down and she was looking to flash it across the face of goal You'd imagine with a second opportunity for a corner that they will get this one into the mixer um, and hope to challenge early on it. Kennedy and Co on the move. Here comes the keeper. Got a hand to it. Brave goalkeeping as well. Knew the traffic was going to be coming her way. Final game of 2019 for both of these countries. The end of a World Cup year. They both were in attendance. Of course, the Olympic qualifiers are next on the agenda in the new year. Lovely ball, Harrison. Oh, Legazzo, this might still work out. Ford not giving up on it. Kerr with a hand up in the middle. Ford straight towards goal. Hill from Legazzo didn't quite come off. Zamora to no one in particular will be coming back. Oh, Polkinghorn, maybe not. Little foot in there. Oh, there was a promising run being made off the ball there by Lara, not seen by Lopez. Now Francisco Lara can chase this one. Look at the speed of Carpenter though. First capped as a 15 year old. Now Pania straight into Carpenter, kept her arms out of it. Needle just squeezed it back. Cross comes Carpenter once more. by Legazzo. Oh, poor by Gilnick gives it away to Aido, trying to chip the goalkeeper from that angle. That was an audacious thought. See a little apology from Gilnick after that pass. You know she hesitated just a moment too long on it and uh, allowed Chile to get a shot away on frame. Alongside Guerrero in the heart of defence. Also club teammates with Rayo Vallecano in Spain. Lovely wait on this pass. Will Pania be able to get there? Not before Carpenter. What energy she provides. Fans on this side of the ground at Hindmarsh are being treated to a showcase of her athleticism. It's particularly impressive, isn't it? I'd, I'd love to see a sort of GPS stats of what she covers in a field and, and the high work rate at which she does it as well is just really impressive. They talk about repeat sprints, don't they? The ability to, to go and then go again, and she's got it in spades. She sure does. Guerrero lifting one over the top. Almaceda on the chase, able to prevent the goal kick and try and ham Australia into that corner. Again, pressure on Yallop, but able to keep it away from Araya. Better ball out. And that's the kind of touch you're after from Ford. Kept it away from her opponent. Ran into trouble eventually, but strong arm tactics got rid of Aedo. And Australia. Uh, surging forward again, Harrison, eyes lighting up, Amy Harrison just wide. Still looking for her first international goal. But I really 
love that from Amy Harrison, that she was confident enough to drive through the middle of the field. And then when she had a look up and saw that she still had space, slow herself down and get her head over the ball to get a decent shot on goal as well. Really opportunistic and um, good sign from Amy Harrison back in the side. Played 10 games for the Washington Spirit in her first NWSL campaign alongside Legaza. They'll be rivals in the Sydney Derbies this W League season. Sammy! Win it! Well done! We're winning everyone! Well done, Ed! That was Ivan Jolic, the number two of Ante Milicic, with the encouraging words from the sideline. Humbled out by Williams, effectively. Kerr on the move. Say has read it well. Campos playing the way she's facing. Picked off by Gilnick. Delivers along the deck. And Ford got it towards goal, but enough pressure from Guerrero, who's come off second best. She's in pain right now. The veteran centre-half. That's a beautiful delivery there by Emily Gilnick. Fantastic weight she gets behind her service there and um, just contact there with Caitlin Ford and Guerrero. And um, as you mentioned, Guerrero's come off second best there, but uh, another really positive opportunity from this, for the Matildas. There's Jenna McCormick who made that incredible debut in Sydney. One of the South Australians on the bench along with Emma Checker, who had a late cameo the other day and the uncapped Sarah Willisey, the third choice goalkeeper. An impromptu timeout and trying to eavesdrop is Robbie Cornthwaite. Yeah, it looks like Ante Milicic has got the team in at uh, this opportunity in, in a break-in play. I think um, this opening 30 minutes has been quite interesting. I think Chile started the game really well. And once Australia went in front, they had a, a five-minute spell where they were sort of on the front foot and, and Chile's sort of got themselves back into it now. I think... We have to give the visitors a lot of credit. They're making things difficult, in particular in the in the centre of the field. We know how strong Australia are in those wide areas, and they're, they're going to continue to look to capitalise in that in those positions. Absolutely packed in the Chile Bay. They've got great support wherever they've been. And they're four games down under over the last year and a bit. Carla Guerrero looks like she'll be OK. The moon has been arising in the distance. stop start at times in this first half we we'll have to see how much stoppage time there'll be at the end of it all as Guerrero waits to be invited back on scored in that 3-2 win over Australia just over a year ago now it's a year ago tomorrow that Australia won 5-0 with all five in the second half in Newcastle, Caitlin Ford scored her first international hat-trick that day. Polkinghorne, coolly done. Glides past the couple. Carpenter told to go. Saw Ante Milicic gesturing to his team, move it from side to side, make them work a little. You can go, Polk, if you want. Meeks again, Meeks again, Meeks, Meeks! You better pass it to Mika. And he's screaming out, Meeks again. Australia 2-1 to one in that passes completed category. And that time, Kennedy off a little. Sensing the frustration there, just what's necessary to happen at this point is just that fast switch across the back of the, back of the field and swing it back a few times, that's fine. It's going to move the Chileans, it's going to get a few more touches on the ball and, and settle the Matildas girls into um, a bit more of a, of a rhythm after that break and play. Holkinghorn again, this one getting away from her. Kept it alive, though, for Harrison. Tough pass for Legazzo to pull off. A little bit of leftovers there between Harrison and Aedo. That's what happens sometimes when you get two games in such a short space of time. Some players don't get along and they bring it to the next game. Araya 
Lovely wait, but Almasada waited and Catley stepped in. What was going on here with uh, Harrison and Aedo? Didn't appreciate the arm being raised and flicked one out herself. Bit of friendly fire there. Good looking ball in behind. Carpenter struggling to deal with it, but got back. Kept her arms out of it and rode through a challenge as well. And that little flick's going to work out off Gildick for Kerr. Skipped over one challenge. Look at Samiga. Now Gilnick in behind. Runs being made in the middle. Through to Kerr, nearly. Yallop, deflection, great goalkeeping. Campos kept her feet initially and scrambled across in time. Well, there's some great bit of defending there back from at the back from Ellie Carpenter. Really physical, a couple of chances. I think she was appealing for a, for a free, but she did a great job and her ball through from the back there. Set up this opportunity now that we have a corner at the other end of the field. Campos got there comfortably after the deflection. Corners haven't quite worked out from this side yet. There's Harrison once more. Keeper stays this time. Kennedy couldn't quite get over the top of it. Kerr will keep it in. It's going to get away. Been a really pleasing start for for Campos. Um, a couple of really nice, clean grabs and some really brave, confident goalkeeping for her. No relation to Jorge Campos, the uh, veteran and former Mexico goalkeeper who played for his country more than a hundred times. Same height though. Those two goalkeepers and Natalia Campos could do nothing about the goal either. She was guarding a near post and just copped a cruel deflection. To squeeze its way into the only window that was available. Playing it out calmly to Guerrero. Had to be quick as Legazzo was closing her down. Led to the turnover. Kerr was borderline offside there. Flag stayed down. And a misplaced pass putting Australia on the back foot and all the way back to Williams. Holking Hall. Lovely ball over the top. Catley. Yallop. Harrison told to face forward. First touch lets her down. Nicely there until it broke off Aedo. Ford bent her run, stayed on side. Strong work by Araya helping out from midfield, and now they've got the goal kick. Really pleasing to see Caitlin Ford get on the ball a bit more this game. I felt as though on Saturday, by her standards, it probably wasn't her strongest performance, um, but she's definitely had some more positive touches um, in the first half tonight. Celebrated her 25th birthday yesterday in the city of churches. So many of these players coming through together at the same time. They're all around, or a lot of them are around that 80 cap mark now. And still in their mid-20s. Going to have a lot of 100 gamers coming up in the next few years. We considered a veteran at 30. <laughs> Already in the 100 club, game number 121 today for Australia. Lara trying to get across. Carpenter gets away from her. Deflection here, all the way through for Ford. It was a swing her leg as Guerrero took the opportunity away. See the type of ball that Ellie was trying to play through there. Didn't quite execute it exactly how she'd wanted to, but the deflection did her a favour and um, a bit of a half chance there for the Matildas. Great readjustment from Carla Guerrero. Uh, a 
Araya. Galas. Missed Zamora. Kilnick told Polkinghorn not me, so she chose Legazzo instead. Australia will play high tempo when they can. Just held up long enough. So running into the channel and Kennedy turned down that run Yallop had to shield it away from Lopez asking for a card sick of the uh, fouls being committed by the Spanish born Chilean international qualifies to play for Chile through her mum's side Again, just a bit of heavy body there and a bit of frustration coming through on Yallop. Um, just needs to be able to put the ball down, play quickly, and there's a couple of calls to get that ball out of there quickly, but held up by the referee. Gilnick. Kerr. And two to beat. Australia's throw as we close in on half time only goal of the game so far coming from Emily Gilnick in the 23rd minute good ball and all challenge from Fernanda Pania Advance again. Oh, clever little dummy. Legazzo. Chance to bend that to the back post to work towards Kerr, but it was broken up again. Needed to be by Chile. Kennedy looking for Kerr. The header was a half-hearted one, perhaps trying to tee up forward. And Campos took it away. That move by Caitlin Ford there, that's the Caitlin Ford that we know and love. And Credit to Legazzo there just to be able to read that and continue her run through and, and create yet again another half chance for, for Australia. Guerrero has recovered nicely from that knock. The Lara of Carpenter, Australia's best in this first half, was in the road. from Yallop has been pretty tidy in most situations. Would have clipped it over the top of opposing midfielders. Now Polkinghorn waits it for Kerr. Sam Kerr dinking one. Catley will run onto it. Harrison. Legazzo with a run into the box. Ford tried to dummy and leave it for Legazzo. All Kerr. And now the chase is on. Going to sail harmlessly through to Lydia Williams. Better turn by Ford. Sam Kerr in behind. Keeper comes. Campos denies Kerr. That's a penalty though. Sam won it second time around. And the inexperienced goalkeeper has been found out by Australia's best. It's a clear penalty. There can be no debate. First attempt of the save was a good save at that, but just that inexperience of the second save and just getting Sammy Kerr's foot there. No doubt about that penalty for Australia. Well, the New Zealand referee, Anna Maria Keeley, 
makes the adjudication and Sam Kerr has the opportunity to ensure she'll finish the year with the average of at least a goal a game. Missed a penalty at the World Cup. Had it saved in the round of 16. There'll be a few little demons there. Penalty taking not always her strength, but she will have thought long and hard about it. It's Kerr v Campos. Sam Kerr denied by the keeper with a really strong hand. And there are some demons from the spot for Australia at international level. Great reaction, fuming about the penalty award. And then denying Sam Kerr. Harrison has her pocket picked. Counter attack on here after the corner. Well, Zamora turned away when she had a ball to Lara, which could have opened Australia up. They still might get through through a riot. Out towards Lara, overlapping his Pania. Lara whips one in across the face of Polkinghorn. No way through for Zamora. They missed the trick there. That Chile on the counter. A little too conservative, perhaps. Perhaps they're speedy and. What an opportunity for, for Sam Kerr, for Australia, but it is really, really tough after missing a penalty in a, in a World Cup to be able to step up, like you say, put those demons aside and, and step up for your team and for your country. And, that, and that's a fantastic save. You can't take away how brilliant that save was as well from Campos. So she gave away the penalty. Kerr went for power. Too close to the goalkeeper, though. Oh, that's exactly right. There's good power behind that, but in terms of the goalkeeper's quality, safe range, it's right in there. It's just a hand out to the side, and she does get a really strong hand to it. But, yeah, Sam will be disappointed with herself for that, but I, I give her full credit for stepping up and taking that because that's a really hard to do, uh, hard thing to do uh, mentally. And the substitutes know that it's Campos who will be grabbing the headlines back home in Chile. At the break, it's Australia 1, Chile 0. Yeah, thanks so much, Speedy. We're off to a short break live here on Fox Sports. On the other side, Giorgio Mandel and Michelle Heyman will run our eye over all of the first half action between the Matildas and Chile. Reserve. Quality. Effort. Attention to detail. Imagine what a bourbon can be. When you've got Australia's most accurate free property price predictor from ANZ, you'll know which homes are worth your time and which ones are not. Search ANZ Buy Ready. They call me help. You've had your home and car insurance with this mob for years. Why? Well, they bumped me up to triple titanium status. Here's what you could be saving with Budget Direct. Titanium? I don't. Get award-winning insurance for less. Budget Direct. Insurance solved. Hungry Jack's Flame Grilled Flavor meets ice-cold refreshment. Get a free Coke glass with any large Hungry Jack's meal. Collect all four colours. Get a free Coke glass with any large meal, only at Hungry Jack's. Better. Hi, sir, you wanted to see me? Yes, that night. Uh, please take a seat. As you know, we're having a tough time in the dungeons. We have a lot of low-level champions, such as yourself. 
I'm afraid I'll have to sacrifice you. What? What the hell? Brass big jaw. You gotta be kidding me. I I'm almost level two. Hmm. Next. Raid Shadow Legends. Play for free now. So why do they call you the GOAT? So I broke a 140-year-old record for taking the most wickets for an off-spinner. That stands for the greatest of all time. <laughs> Supercars Championship. That is high stakes. Every practice qualifying race live with no ad breaks during racing. The home of supercars, Fox Sports. Welcome back to the Matildas v Chile. Our girls in the green and gold play at home for one last time in South Australia. And well, Chile, they've done their homework based off what they saw on Saturday. They've come to press our girls in the green and gold. Busy out wide, you've got to say. It's where we've gotten the most joy. Ellie Carpenter came pretty close. Nearly had a good shot of scoring for the first time in quite a while. She usually gets them off her head. But we are in the lead. 1-0 is a score at the moment. Welcome back, entire Rush. I'm joined by Georgia Yeomandale and Michelle Heyman. We saw a couple of the highlights there. I guess the good news is we head into the sheds in the lead and we've really dominated, especially down those wings. And there's some good movement in the front third. What have you made of it? Yeah, look, we have struggled to keep possession a little bit through the midfield. I think that uh, on Saturday we managed to keep possession a little bit better, I think, because Chile was setting, uh, sitting off. In this game, they've stepped up a lot um, and it's put a lot of pressure on that midfield that we've seen has changed this game. So they're trying to settle into the game and under pressure. But as he said, we're getting a lot of joy out wide and when our forwards manage to get in behind that's when we're looking really dangerous. One of those players who did get in behind, Emily Gilnick, who's come in. There's, that's been the shift from the squad that played on Saturday. And it was Emily Gilnick, assisted by Sam Kerr, that led to our opening goal. Talk us through that one, Michelle, and how you saw it. Yeah, it was a, a great finish. I think um, definitely the goalkeeper could have done better and should have done better. But um, for Gilnick to make this run um, behind the defender, just a smart play. And I think that's something that she's been working on as well whilst uh, being over in Europe. She really wants to get her seat on this plane ticket for the Olympics, so she's doing everything possible. And you can see that her work rate is just unbelievable at the moment, and she's just trying really, really hard to do everything right. She, I think she's got down the line maybe 10-plus times already um, within the first half, so she's doing everything positive. It was a great through ball by Sam as well, and it was just... Good movement um, for the other girls to get near the box as well. Good support. Yeah, fantastic tight angle. We know that she's got that in her locker. She loves to whip him in from that right-hand side as well. Should have been, could have been 2-0. Uh, this moment, Sam Kerr and penalties. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but no question in this one, though, was it? N Natalia Campos, who comes in for Christiane Enler, who's back in France. I mean, look, this is a penalty every single day of the week, Georgia. Yeah, it definitely is. If we take it back a little bit, you know, there's that classic ball in behind. That's where we've been dangerous. Sam getting on the ball. You know, keeper's first save is brilliant, but she takes down Sam, and it's definitely a clear-cut penalty from there. And it's quite big for Sam to step up, especially after her last PK um, at the World Cup. For her to be able to step up, it's, it's courageous. It's a captain's role. But, um, yeah, unlucky for Sam. Uh, the goalkeeper read what she was going to do and it's just disappointing. Hopefully Sam can keep her head up um, and continue to f be confident and play the game that she's been playing and this doesn't dwell on her shoulders. Well, someone who can give us a little bit more insight around how she was feeling and what her, I guess, body language and reaction was to missing the penalty is Robbie Cornthwaite, who's standing on the pitch for us. Robbie, over to you, I guess. How was she when she walked up that tunnel? Yeah, I mean, obviously she was disappointed. It's a, it's a moment at the end of the first half. You can go in 2-0 up quite comfortable and it's a, it's a thing that can sway the game. But she had a bit of a wry smile on her face, almost a, as if to say, oh, not again. But um, I think there was probably some frustration from the way that they were playing throughout that first half. And 
just as she was going up the players race, Ante Milicic came across, put his arm around her and um, I think she'll be set to go in the second half. Yeah, good. I'm going to heed that advice. She will be set to go. More goals. Thanks so much, Robbie. Enjoy all the action. You do have the best seat in the house. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Looking at some of the girls that have come into this squad, uh, in comparison to the squad that we saw play at Bankwest Stadium, we talk about Amy Harrison in midfield. We've already mentioned Emily Gilnick playing um, and replacing, I guess, Hayley Russo. What have you made of both of their contributions? It's been really interesting watching the midfield evolve and kind of been a bit under the pump there. Yeah, as I said before... The Chilean defence have managed to get um, Marcus up really tightly and especially in that midfield. They're, I think at this stage they're winning the midfield battle. Uh, there have been a few times where Amy has been able to get on the ball and face forward and beat those lines in midfield and slip a few balls forward for our uh, speedy attack. We see a shot here. so we've, Her confidence is definitely there. She's willing to take those shots. So there are definitely positives to take out of it. But between the three midfielders, they're probably struggling to get into the game a little bit. Yeah, lucky we've got the two wide players in Ali Carpenter and Steph Catley. Ali Carpenter... God, 19 years old, you forget when you watch her, don't you, Michelle? But she's arguably been our best on the park. 100%. Um, I love being able to watch Ellie play just because each game, is, she's very different. She seems to do a lot of the long runs up and down the field, but the way she takes her touches around plays is just something that it's really hard to learn, but she's just a gifted player and is so capable, and especially at this young age, to be able to do what she does is just, yeah... No words for her, but yeah, she is playing really, really well. I think she can definitely maybe just look up a little bit earlier. Um, a couple of times she could have had a shot on goal herself, but yeah, she ain't a forward, so I guess she's not used to that. Is there a bit of fear in terms of that? Because I feel like if Ellie could just go for goal, she gets herself in the right position to do so. Yeah, I think so. I even saw it when we used to play together in Cambria United. There were so many times that she could have just took on the entire squad and score a goal but she gets as close to the box and kind of panics and gets a little bit scared so I, it might be one thing that she could try and improve. Um, I think she is quite an unselfish player though so she's always looking to get forward and, and slip other players in um, that she thinks are probably in a better position than her but sometimes yeah as you yeah. said you just got to take the shot. <laughs> just <laughs> go your selfish. own. Go your own <laughs> Ali. Well we'll see what the second half does dish up. Will the goals rain in for the Matildas? We're off to a short break on the other side. The second half coming up between the Matildas and Chile. It's Lewis Hamilton. Now with six world titles. Champion of the world. Question is, can he match Schumacher on seven? Formula One, Fox Sports. Hey Google, show me the front door. Hey Google, turn on the lights. Hey, Google, close the blinds. A little help at home with the Google Nest family. New Smirnoff infusions infused with natural botanicals. A shout out to our steel blue legends. You dig deep every day to put the roofs over our heads. You've got our backs and we've got your feet. Steel blue boots, built for comfort, made for work. Right now at Nissan, get a seven-year warranty, plus a bonus F Post card worth up to three and a half grand on selected models. The Nissan 2019 plate clearance is on. Sportsbet Same Game Multi is the easiest way to combine the biggest range of NBA markets in the one bet. This will lift my game. Naturally. Same Game Multi yeah. from Sportsbet. Stay. Hi, Jack. Water first. I am Jack. 
first crushing refreshment. Your dog still has his wolf instincts, like howling to announce his pack strength. And just like his ancestors, a nutrient-dense, protein-rich meal is what your dog instinctively needs. Supercoat True Origin, now in grain-free. It's the first Come one. On, Australia, the ultimate viewing experience is here. Two new dedicated Ultra HD channels with sports and movies in 4K, only on Foxtel. Foxtel Ultra HD, where TV comes to life. Yeah, they're just a couple of the Chilean supporters who have come to watch their side take on the might of the Matildas. You can see Jenna McCormick in your screen there. Quickly to Michelle Heyman and Georgie Yeomandale. Any other changes bar this one come the second half? Or do you want to see? Come on. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think we're going to see Hayley Razzo be injected um, a little bit later in this half to just bring some more spark up front. Katrina Gorey, i uh, got to go for my roomie. She hasn't been playing for a while, so I think it would be good for her to get back out on the pitch. OK, let's see what this second half dishes up. It's back to Grace Gill and Brenton Speed. Thanks, Tara. What an opportunity for Jenna McCormick now, who made that wonderful debut on Saturday in Sydney, now playing in her home state, grew up in Mount Gambier. Entire family, mum, dad and her two siblings moved to Adelaide a few years back now, so plenty of family and friends in the house to watch her tonight. And she's going to play 45 minutes here. Former Adelaide Crows, two-time AFLW Premiership player. And there is the reception for the local favourite. What did you make of her debut the other day, Grace? I thought she was really impressive. I thought she played safe football. I thought she played simple football. Um, and I think as a David Tom, that's what you want to do. You want to play. Um, you want to play in a way that gives Ante no doubt about putting you in there. Uh, and that seems to be what's happened in this game as well. She's come on at half time, 45 minutes in her legs, um, and I think she'll she'll play a similar kind of style as what she did on on Saturday night. Interestingly, um, Chile have applied a bit more high pressure tonight, so whether she has a bit more to do in the way of dealing with that kind of one-on-one -on -one challenges and tackles, um, we'll see. So one change made by an Australia at the break. Jenna McCormick on. She had 93% passing accuracy in her debut, the best of any outfield player for Australia. As Gilnick cuts out the pass. Intended for Javier Toro, so Chile have made a change as well. In that left back role, which looked troublesome. It was Pania really struggling to deal with Carpenter and Gilnick at times, so a refresh there for the visitors. Nil up thanks to Emily Gilnick's goal. The penalty miss in first half stoppage time from Sam Kerr. On target it was. Saved by Natalia Campos. What's the dressing room dynamic like for that, do you think? Uh, Sam Kerr, the captain, after missing a penalty, would she have addressed it at any stage i think she would have put her hand up and said sorry guys but no one no one lays that finger of blame uh, in that situation she's the one who had the confidence to step up and take it and full credit to her for doing so but i think they would have just had to shake it off and um, get on with the next the next part of this game which is the next 45 minutes and how they're going to put a couple more goals away it is something that ante milicic may have to address though who australia's penalty taker should be in next year's Olympic qualifiers and indeed the uh, Tokyo 2020 campaign if they get there. He was blowing up there about a free kick being taken further up the pitch than where it should have been. The fourth official Kurt Ams tried to calm him down saying it was a two metre situation. Right outside of the foot, not quite. Paul Gallas.
Great turn of speed from Yallop. Find Catley. And now bending it for an onside Sam Kerr, who looks over her shoulder. No one's with her. Now they're coming. Sam Kerr off the crossbar. And now Gildick. And great handling there by Campos. Keeping it away from Caitlin Ford. Will she nearly atone for that miss within minutes of the second half? Well, what a great opportunity for Sam Kerr there and great vision by Steph Catley to pick her off down the line and a perfectly timed run. The woodwork was all that was between it, but I'm sure she'll have more opportunities. Oh, they were up celebrating the fans behind that goal, but not to be. The woodwork rattled by Sam Kerr. Look at that pass. Carpenter. Early ball in for Ford, nudged over, referee says no penalty, it's alive for Legazzo. Harrison, Amy Harrison goal bound and then nearly an own goal, but just wide off Sayers. And out for the corner, will Australia dominant here? A really strong attacking run again we see here from Ellie Carpenter and just time and time again Ellie has this great finesse on that ball she puts across the Chilean back line and good opportunity for Amy Harrison and some nice tidy touches in there but didn't quite pull it off. Sayers had the unfortunate nick off Gilnick's shot for the opening goal. That time delighted to see it go just around the post on the right side for Chile was floating in the breeze for a long time and Campos again with the claim they've got some good stocks in the goalkeeping ranks don't they when Cristiani Enler is a superstar and Campos the backup has acquitted herself extremely well so far well, it's a great opportunity for her to step in with Enler away and she's really performed great win there by Harrison Ford goes for goal the first ball to Harrison was on Much more confidence in the way Australia is going about their football down breeze. I mentioned it early that it might be a factor. You might be right, Spence. We might see a couple more goals thanks for the breeze. Here's Carpenter. Ellie Carpenter asked for a handball. Nothing doing. Protests continue. Tried to fire it between three opponents in white. Little nick off McCormick. Kennedy was scrambling, sliding in Legazzo, the only Australian booked in that first half, and now Gilnick being urged on. Lovely reverse, Catley's going to get there. And bend it back post, awkward one for the defender, and it's out for the corner. Was this a handball earlier off Carpenter's shot? VAR would argue that yes, perhaps it was. A no look handball. Stopped a goal bound effort. The referee had a good view, turned it down. This one floating again. Keeper under enormous pressure. How would it come down with it? Four Australians were flying in there, but the keeper towered over them. Garzo can use Catley for another delivery, perhaps, from that left-hand side. Didn't pull the trigger initially. Tries to settle for a corner. Not going to get it. And her argument is, why would I settle for the corner and let it go out of play if I'm not going to get one? Closer look at it there, and I can see why... Steph Catley was frustrated on that one. What are you watching? Was the message she was trying to get across. McCormick, plenty of time. Back to Yallop. Ken Catley's the option. Early ball to Ford is on.
Callip having to shield it away. Kerr was strong, a little too strong. Through the back of her opponent. We're seeing Chile this game play a particularly physical game and a number of one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one battles are coming into play. And the physicality is great, but the girls have just got to learn to be measured and strategic about it all. But Sam did cop a fair bit of body on that one. was trying to get the free kick taken in the right part of the pitch and eventually the assistant agrees with it not that it really mattered a whole lot and now we have a secondary free kick because the referee hadn't whistled oh boy we got there Coach of Chile, Jose Letelier, getting across the message that he wants them to hold up and wait for the defenders to get forward here. He knows there is an Achilles heel for Australia defending set pieces. You can see as well Australia have dropped 11 players behind the ball. They're not leaving one up as a target. All 11 bodies behind this free kick. Just driven in low and cut out by Legazzo found Gilnick who was the one player wall oh that was awkward the way that uh, Toro won the ball and then Gilnick just collided with her while she was on the deck she got to keep her head out of it she did she did but that one's going to hurt tomorrow she's just coming a bit late and clipped her at the bottom of the ankle Kennedy advancing for the first time so far in this second half. The feature of the start to Australia's game. Wayne Kennedy is able to get forward, make things happen. A little handball in there from Catlett. Balmaceda able to turn away from Kennedy and get her head up. McCormick back in the road. Slowed down Zamora enough. As well there if Kennedy has fallen on that, that strapped up wrist of hers as she's gotten up a little bit gingerly and she's holding at it for a while after that bit of play. Yeah, playing with a broken skateboard apparently as Kerr zips between a couple. Still Sam Kerr. They're backing off. Goes wide to Gilnick. Back towards Kerr. Goalkeeper's done enough in company with her two centre halves. And no corner there. Not across the whole of the line. It was a close run thing. Kennedy touch let her down and now the counter attack is on. Kennedy out of position. Zamora on the move. And a clip of heels. Yallet brings Zamora down. I'm not sure she was intending to do that, but she'll cop a yellow anyway. Yeah, look, I don't think there's any malice in that from Yallop. Um, just a genuine thought. Maybe looking at it again a second time. There's just a bit of a late body on there. Not malicious by any means, but um, most certainly a yellow card that's going to come with that kind of challenge. What a surge this was from Sam Kerr. Has been looking at Gilnick as an option down that right-hand side. Used her again and tried to get on the end of this one in between three opponents. going on in the Australian defensive setup here making sure they've got each and every opponent accounted for Francisca Lara to swing it in the referee wants to sort out the push and shove certainly takes a long time to get the game restarted does the Kiwi referee Probably something she could work on. And 
fans are getting restless watching it. Here to be entertained as Lara delivers. Oh, big chance! Williams, a spectacular save. Keeps out Zamora, and Australia maintain their lead. Either side of the keeper, and Australia were in trouble. Well, that was a quality free, free kick coming in there. And Williams, what a stand-up save. Great positioning to be in the right place, just so she could receive that on her legs. But wonderful free kick and, and full credit to Lydia Williams there for great positioning to be able to keep that one out of the back of the net. Lara's delivery it was for the free kick. And now from the corner, Mokur. Caught plenty of contact. And Australia clear their lines. Uh, talking it over with one of the Chilean players in back play saying that he wasn't happy with the way Zamora led with an elbow there. No damage done. But we see how important Sam Kerr is defensively just as well as she is in attack and time and time again she's the one to clear that defensive header on corners and set pieces. late body coming in through her and you can see her stand over the top after that bit of play she's very unhappy with that challenge I mentioned the support here tonight and there's a big fan club for one player in particular Robbie Cornthwaite yeah, there certainly is. We heard the uh, loud cheer for Jenna McCormick when she came onto the field, and there's uh, a lot of her ex AFLW Crows teammates here in the crowd tonight. Uh, nestled in there, there's a few players. Football fans might actually recognise Mariana Rayashich, who uh, spent some time with Adelaide United as well. Australia on the back foot here as Lara tries the back heel. Did that touch? A touch off Australia no, out for the goal kick as we close in on the hour mark. Jenna McCormick has always been her dream to represent Australia in this code. And she turned her back on the Crows to commit full time to football. And here she is. that Olympic dream in 2020. Australia were there in 2016. Knocked out in the quarterfinal cruelly on penalties by Brazil, the host nation. On the move again, here's Balmaceda. Deflection, and Lydia Williams will be able to claim. Australia preparing their second change. Hayley Razzo not too far away. were advanced almost tempting Australia to play balls like that and then break it up and try and hit them the other way quickly Lara will flick on doesn't find its way past Kennedy and here's Kerr Carpenter ever willing support lovely touch inside Gilnick Kerr Passing sequence this from Australia. Yallop sliced out towards Gilnick. Little flick over the top. Harrison. And it will elude the teammate at the back post. A really promising move from the Matildas. And that was a better bit of passing there as well. Um, it had seemed a little bit frantic in there for a while. Passes were going awry and a sense that things were unsettled. But that la last passage of play certainly suggests that the Matilda set them back in. So the goal scorer departs. Emily Gilnick came up with her eighth goal for her country. Back in the 23rd minute, perfectly weighted pass from Kerr, a little flick. Off Sayers proved the difference maker. Razzo slots in like for like. We saw the same change in reverse in Sydney. 
different kind of player, though, Hayley Razza. Yeah, she certainly is, and there's always a sense when she comes on that she's going to create something. She's just that lightning-fast kind of player and really aggressive and tenacious with uh, her playing style, and I'm sure she'll give the Chilean defence some difficulties for the, the next 30 minutes or so. Five years of age, Hayley Razzo. Scored four goals for Portland in the American season. Look how upset the striker is with the lack of follow-up. Almaceda pressed the goalkeeper. No one in behind. Ford found by Catley. Flag goes up belatedly. Suk Park, the assistant on the far side. Ford thought she was in business. Pretty tight call. Probably the right one. Ford pushed under it. Australia want to play high tempo. And they're about to introduce a player. Emily Van Egmond, who we saw from the start the other day. And maybe a, a switch for Yallop now, and Egmont might, might play at the base of midfield as Amy Harrison makes way and can get ready for the W League season opener in 48 hours' time as the Wanderers face Brisbane. Well, they're going to keep Yallop where she is. I think that's a good innings there by Amy Harrison, though, and understandably needs a bit of rest before the W League opener on Thursday night. Perhaps reflecting on a few opportunities to open her account for her country as well. It will come. Gallup with speed got there ahead of Zamora. Catley. Ford. Tracked it down. After it got away from her initially. Here's Razzo. Finds Kerr, little layoff works for Van Egmond. How's the weight for Carpenter? Defender did enough. Toro on the stretch. Risky ball out there that will be pounced upon. Pretty narrow here, Australia. Catley to deliver, looking for Kerr. Not the angle required. Quite the angle, but not a bad a bad option there from Catley. And we see the immediate effect that Emily Van Egmond's had as she comes onto the field. And she's that type of player that her passing is just flawless for a lot of the time. And her delivery is just weighted really, really well. Sam Kerr wanted the ball from the ball girl, and she responded. Australia into the box quickly. Now Kerr in a wide area. Goes back to Catley. Gallup went backwards. Australia taking the patient approach. McCormick back to Yallop. Easily cut out by Balmaceda, who plays her role. Clever footballer. Free kick goes the way of Legasso. Who's been going at it with Lopez right throughout the game. It has been a very good physical battle going on between those two for <laughs> since the first whistle. And um, the guys has probably gone a little bit quiet for the last 30 minutes or so um, of the game, but she's bringing herself back into it now and doing a lot of hard running off the ball. Yellow card dished out for an accumulation of fouls more than that one in particular. Question now, Speedy, are we going to see a, a shot or a cross from this one? 
Must be tempting to take on the strike. And Egmont placing it with purpose. Has scored some long range stunners in her time. She's Eight. definitely got the technique to do so. 18 goals in total for her country. Having a look at the angle. Which corner does she fancy or will she look for Kerr in the middle? With her aerial ability, Kennedy is a danger as well. Catley leaves it for Van Egmont. Driven in low. Legazzo fires it into the traffic. Dallas goes down looking for a free kick that wasn't there. It's play on. And away by Sayers. Well, you want action and drama in a passage of play, it's all there. Well, she certainly thought about that one there. And it wasn't a shot or a cross, really. <laughs> it was a, a hybrid between the two and a scrambled effort there to get that away. And Haley Russo was asking, asking the question of a foul. And was she taken down? Jenna McCormack almost going with the uh, hip and shoulder inside the box there. Physical presence. Took a defender out the other day for Kerr's opener. by Catley. Just as Chile were thinking counter-attack time. Catley again. Makes the two of the ball! Dante Milicic keeping Yalop on notice. Offside flag here against Lara. Carpenter got the block in anyway. So much going on during that sequence. That's a life flash before her eyes as McCormack led with the uh, elbows flash slash forearm there. I would have two speed. <laughs> yeah, again, layoffs have been very tidy today. She's on the move. Gallup has been found. Fans wanted to shoot. And Egmont pokes it in behind. Ford wasn't quite in sync with herself there. The mind and the feet weren't going at the same rate. We've seen her do that, that turn and spin a number of times before, but didn't quite get away with it that time. <laughs> 20 minutes to go in Australia with only the one goal to show for themselves so far. What have you made of them as an attacking force in this game? I think they've been a bit better this game, but what we've seen from Chile is that they've also been better. They've had a better game than what they did on Saturday. Brazo now. Fires one across, easily cut out at that near post. was told to secure that ball by Milicic in that defensive midfield role, unable to do so on that occasion. And coolly done by Chile, working their way out of defence. Haven't had this lady on the ball enough so far in the game. Aedo, who can make things happen. Likewise, Araya. Much tougher for them to get forward in this second 45. Yeah, it has been tougher for them. And, and something you've just mentioned there is getting those people on the ball for them and finding the number six for the Chileans. They didn't have much success with that on, on Saturday evening and they've had a bit more today and I think that's been... Um, that, that's helped them with the, their success we've seen today. certainly set the tempo three days ago. Fabulous 90-minute performance from the veteran midfielder. And she might come on for Yallop in that number six role in a moment. Well, we spoke about Ivy's passing, and I think the spine of the Matildas on 
on Saturday was particularly impressive between Lydia, uh, Jenna, Ivy and Emily. Their passing rate was just top notch. They were hitting the targets, um, passing percentage was way up there and um, a really impressive spine. But we, you're right, we, we might see Ivy yet have Le a spell. Legazzo dropping it over the top. It's going to sail away on the breeze for Campos. We've got the speed of Razzo and Kerr. It's a, a dual threat for those balls over the top, but they're tough to execute. They are, and for someone like Hayley Razo, she needs all the width and the space to run into, so those balls over the top, they've got to be played into space, not too direct towards the keeper and out on the angle to give her as much time as possible to, to catch them, because we know she will. Oh, Kennedy. That one does not tickle coming together between defender and attacker there. Lara and Kennedy have both stayed down and you can do damage when you're going to kick a ball and suddenly an opponent's leg gets in the road. Oof. Yeah, those ones really hurt it. I, there's no malice there whatsoever. It's just a genuine okay. attempt on the ball for both of them and they've come off equally as hurt. Looks like Alana Kennedy might be experiencing a bit of cramp following that challenge. So it is Yallop who'll have to finish her stretching out of the cramp responsibilities to make way for Ivy Lewick. So the 34-year-old midfielder about to come on for her 24th cap, currently playing in Norway. One of Australia's overseas brigade, a winner of four W League championships. A winner everywhere she's been, and she showcased that the other day. She absolutely did, Speedy, and she's that kind of player that I think is almost a bit underrated. She's, she's sort of a, a quiet achiever, um, really consistent passer, uh, doesn't try to do anything particularly fancy, but always hits her target, um, and that experience kind of head on the field is really important, especially going into this time of the game with about 15 or so minutes to go. And Kennedy has limped off. Yeah, Someone's got to drop it. Be done. They're asking for Emma Checker to race on back. Robbie called for it. Yeah, that's right. As soon as uh, Kennedy went, went down and got checked out from Matilda's doctor, Dr. James Illich, uh, they immediately sent for Emma Checker, and um, she, she's been warming up. Another South Aussie, and I spoke to her and Jenna McCormack. Uh, yesterday and they both had said if they get the opportunity to partner each other uh, in the centre of defence would be a dream come true. Oh, looping onto the crossbar off Sam Kerr. Lydia Williams was backtracking and that could easily have been the equaliser. Again, they've had a couple of cracks at it, Chillet. And that's a decent strike with a deflection as well, but Lydia had to be on her toes, backtrack and just help that one with a little tap over the bar to make sure about where the rebound might have been going as well. Quickly back to her feet. And has produced some amazing saves down the years. And one earlier in this game as well. Change for both teams. Very popular figure. And a checker and she'll pick up her fellow substitute. Yesenia Lopez. Guerrero, just enough of a body nudge from Van Egmond as Guerrero looked to direct the header goalwards. Really pleased to see Emma Checker get an opportunity in front of her home crowd as well. And that's a hard one to come onto a defensive corner, but um, fortunately she didn't have too much to do with it. Lewick turns and finds Van Egmond. you in the camp that says don't make a change when you're defending a set piece mind you you may as well get the extra body out there because Kennedy wasn't on the pitch of course well that's the thing if you need the extra body out there then absolutely get them on there um, but I'd be less inclined to make that change flag will go up here against Ford offside by about half a meter Side of her nearest defender, but maybe kept on by the other. But the assistant 
throw it another way. Australia winning the offside count. They have contested and queried a few. That held up in the breeze for Razzo. Teammates were on the move as well. She could have directed the header inside. So Chile very much in the contest still. Looking to finish 2019 on a high after that history making win over Brazil in the last couple of months as well. They won a penalty shootout in Sao Paulo. Beat them for the first time in 14 attempts. Catley has been fantastic. Kept alive though. And now Lopez harmlessly up and over. But Chile most certainly on a hunt for an equaliser there and great defensive positioning there by Steph Catley to just intercept that ball over the top. Carpenter took the goal kick and strode away. Razzo maintaining the width. Had two to beat in the end. Checker in the back of Zamora. Did enough to put her off. Australia looking for that two goal buffer, which they established in the second half the other day, and they needed it. Lovely turn. Legazzo onside this time is Ford. Alive by Lewick and Kerr was stretching. Couldn't quite get there. That would have been a very fortunate goal the way it, the build up all occurred. Really lovely turn in there by Legazzo to get herself in a forward facing position and provide an opportunity out to the wing. Um, that's the sort of promising things that we expect from her. And um, she has been, again, I'd say a little bit quiet by her standards for this game, but certainly those moments of brilliance are the ones that we love of her. Sayers in the wars. Talking it over with Guerrero, who's copped her fair share of knocks this evening as well. Kerr got front position, poked away by Guerrero. Lewick, perfect passing again, that's what she provides. Right out in front of Carpenter, likewise in front of Razzo. Let's it go to the byline and gets the corner. That's the kind of ball that Hayley Russo really, really favours off and she looked for it from Ellie and Ellie credit to her place that perfectly weighted into that space and um, great run there by Hayley Russo. I often see Van Egmond almost slice the ball towards the penalty spot in these situations. A little close to the keeper, great fist away. McCormick is lurking, likewise Checker. They can keep Australia in, in the attacking third. Hopeful lift back in by Carpenter. No one on a wavelength. It's been so brave defending her own line with shirts flying in her direction as those corners have been dropping in. Yes, yeah, she has, and she's just taken a minute. She might have copped a knock just coming up for that challenge on the punch. We'll get a better look here. into the forearm straight away. Yeah, it looked like might have been a, the elbow there of Caitlin Ford. Might have just clipped her on the forehead. What have you made of Australia's corners today? They've had a lot, but haven't looked too threatening with them. They have had a few and, and haven't been able to do a great deal with them, which um, with someone like Sam Kerr, a target like Van Egmond, although she was on the end of that one, sorry, taking that one, you'd hope they'd be able to capitalise a bit more. Lana Kennedy, we see her do plenty at W League level from set pieces as well. There's some real technicians in this team. Um, Alana Kennedy, you've just mentioned, we see line up time and time again and just technically really gifted Emily Van Egmond of a similar kind of nature. Checker brought it down for Louis. Little no look past the Van Egmond. 
had to be so patient, Ivy Lewick. Eventually got to her World Cup in 2019 after missing out on the 2011 and 2015 squad for different reasons. But every pass finds the mark, and it's a pleasure to watch from a neutral perspective. How do you look on the way Lewick plays the game, what she brings to a team when she comes on? Yeah, look, I couldn't agree more, Speeds. I think she's just really measured. Uh, I think she's really considered in her passes. Um, like you say, they always hit the target. And not only that, but they hit the right side of the player. Everything you want from a number six, I think Ivy delivers on. And just given that she's got a bit more age as well, she's got that experienced and level, experience, sorry, and level head. Um, yeah, I think she's a really val valued member of this squad. Telling your teammates to make their moves. Has to go wide to Carpenter. Plenty waiting around the penalty spot. Australia can get a threatening ball in. Carpenter. Back to Van Egmond. She does deliver. Oh, getting in there. And nearly scoring for Australia. It was Chloe Legazzo. There's a beautiful ball in from Van Egmond. First time pass in from Van Engelman there with lovely texture on it and couldn't quite get the purchase in the box that it needed to get a shot on goal. He was that close for Legazzo, who kept on stretching for it. Had a threatening run from midfield. Again, the ball girl was brilliant there, got it to Ford in a hurry. Now Kerr summing it all up. Van Egmon stretching, couldn't quite get on the end of it. Razzo went down as well hoping for a penalty well, good vision there by sam kerr to be able to knock that one back to emily van egmond coming through and van egmond not quite with the legs to get herself there lewick again left foot pass for catley likewise for kerr on a turn provider again, Sam Kerr. Van Egmond. And a little flick off Chile out for another corner. And you've got to have everyone on the same page. Look at the ball kit. Finds Ford. Immediately the quick throw is on to Kerr and it nearly led to a goal. See that happen sometimes in world football and good awareness from everyone. Great play by the ball girl there. <laughs> Australian attacking set piece delivered by Van Egmont and away again by Chile. Nobby Cornthwaite, what are you making of the way Australia are executing their set pieces? Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's been a, a bit of a game plan tonight to try to target the second choice keeper who's come in. But one thing that Australia has been really disappointed with, the, the bench has been up and about really barking instructions to the players outside of the box, how they're setting up defensively from their attacking corners. Now, I know when there's a lot of substitutions in the second half, it can become difficult uh, for a lot of players to know their roles, but certainly that's one area I think the, uh, the Matildas can really work on. Accuracy 15%. So close to going into the medal rounds in the 2016 Olympics, the Matildas. Still got to qualify next February in that group with China, Thailand, and Chinese Taipei. Want to top that group and secure their passage to Tokyo 2020 or finish second in the group. And there'll be a cutthroat two legged tie with another team from Asia. Offside flag here. But there's plenty to work on and there's not much time to work on because the next time they come together will be the camp for that three-game series in Asia. Well, that's right. And we were speaking about earlier as well, 23, 23 players into the, the qualifying rounds and only 18 players go into the Olympic team. So everyone out here and everyone in the Matilda squad is absolutely vying for a position and that's why these games are so important to, to demonstrate their capability and demonstrate what they can bring to the team. McCormick can do just that. Magazzo hugging the sideline found by Catley. Lou 
Kubik recycles through Checker. Two South Australians in the heart of defence now. McCormick and Checker keeps it alive again, does Emma. Carpenter wrapping around, stays on side, found by Razzo. Oh, Kerr flicked it back inside. Carpenter must have been flirting with offside the way she got back into it, but flag stayed down. And Egmont settles for the throw. Fans just sensing maybe a second goal can finish things off here. combination of Guerrero and Sayers in the heart of defence is immense for Chile. They were a tough nut to crack for Sweden and the USA in the World Cup. Now Kerr trying to get the better of them, another back heel. A little uppercut and a head injury for Hayley Razzo. Maybe a blood nose, the referee blowing things up immediately. Yeah, it looks like Hayley Razzo has copped this one right on the end of the nose, which is Kind of sting. Head thrown back, eyes watering, and blood coming perhaps from the nose. Just don't have any time to react to those ones. But. Uh, that's merely a flesh wound for Hayley Razzo after what she went through. She'll brush that one off, she's fine. <laughs> the broken back and all that about 18 months ago. And all that time in hospital, all that time spent rehabbing to get back out there and do what she loves to do. I can't talk enough about how impressive her return has been and how great her resilience has been in just getting herself back on the field and uh, her mentality, it's just been it's just been really, really fantastic to see. I'm so happy for her. So Francisca Lara makes way. Another spectacular showing from her in the two games and replaced by Mardonez, who had eight years away from the national team before returning this year. Counting down the clock now. Matildas just have to be really strategic about how they use the ball for the last few minutes of this game. Um, they still only have that one goal buffer, so it's nervous times and possession is particularly important at this stage in the game. The pass from McCormick, intended for Catley, went straight to the right boot of Milicic instead, who kicked it away in frustration. Not happy with the scoreline or the performance in either game. Kerr, lovely pass. Razzo. And Guerrero got there again. At the expense of the corner. But pretty impressive for Guerrero to almost outpace Hayley Raso on that one. So she's she's been fantastic today for, for Chile. I think she's stepped up time and time again. short Van Egmont good looking delivery flick off Razai would have been offside against Kerr had it found it and from that build up of corner I'd almost like almost like to see Emily Van Egmont have a shot on goal on her right foot there she's we've spoken about the technique and the texture that she can get on that kind of shot um, I would have loved to see her have a peg on frame last Olympic qualifying tournament she scored an amazing goal from 25 meters away lovely pass Catley Ford's got a one-on-one -on -one battle easily skins Gallas slices it in Kirk got on the end of it and it was just a feather of a touch across the face of goal still just the one nil advantage for Australia
rare touch for Lydia Williams in the last few minutes. Lewick. Chopped down by Mardonias. who then slows down the free kick. That's not part of Chile's game plan as they chase the equaliser. the angle for Ford. Again, misplaced pass from Caitlin Ford. Going to be looking forward to a good run of games in the W loop. Find her touch again, heading into that Olympic qualifying tournament. Araya, is this the chance? Tough for Balmaceda to run under that one. Just a little bit sloppy in possession there for the Matildas. Um, as mentioned, really, really important at this point in the game that they're super strategic with their possession and they just run down the clock. Here's Kerr, found by Carpenter. And the defenders just put their bodies in the right places. And the goalkeeper with the safe handling again. We'll be hearing from Sam Kerr post game, just as we did the other day, where she expressed her disappointment at that late concession of the goal. But they are winning again in Australia. By that slender margin, they're going to finish with a winning record in 2019. Four losses to go with seven victories, should they close this one out in the last 30 seconds or so. Playing the 90 again. Kerr, Middle Avenue to Van Egmond. It's going to stay in for McCormick. Last chance to build up an attack here for the Matildas. To close out the calendar year. Lewick, forward. Back to Ivy. Again, look at the passing of Ivy Lewick. It's outstanding. She missed the market. I don't think so. In her cameo. And she finishes with the ball. And Australia finish with the win. Back-to-back -back victories over Chile. The missed penalty from Sam Kerr does not come back to haunt. Although, try telling her that. It's Emily Gilnick's winner in the end. Coming midway through that first half. The assist for Kerr, and Australia held on to that 1-0 lead right throughout the rest of the game. Alana Kennedy withdrawn with an injury. Let's hope she's OK after being in the wars this week with the broken scaphoid and all that. But the South American side certainly put up another solid fight for Australia in this two-game series.